Thank you so much for being here with us today, Sadat. It is a very historic day. Rahel just ran through the timeline for us. We have seen global equity markets around the world react sharply. We're seeing some of the European bourses down 8%, 10%, partly in reaction to what's going on with the price of oil. So help us put it all in context. Why is this so important? What are the global consequences when you see the price of oil fall 20%? Well, good morning, uh, Courtney. I think we have to put all of this in context. Uh, this is a temporary transition. Uh, yes, we have a lot of problems with the uh, coronavirus, with the tariff issues between the U.S. and China, with GDP uh, being softer than uh, historical levels, uh, trade across the world, Brexit. You know, there are a lot of issues, and oil is just one of them. Um, I think the, the team, the technical team that works in support of OPEC and non-OPEC did the best job they could at forecasting what additional cut would be required. Uh, that's one and a half million over the 2.1 million that had been agreed to in December. So that's quite a large cut. And uh, you could imagine why there would be a lot of uh, discussion as to whether this was too much or not enough. In any case, as far as the kingdom is concerned, the, the kingdom has been here before. We work very diligently to sustain uh, stable prices. And, you know, if uh, the kingdom produces over 10, the kingdom took a voluntary cut of 400,000 barrels uh, at the time of the previous uh, arrangements between OPEC and non-OPEC. So going up from 9.7 to just over 10, is just going back to where the kingdom was supposed to be all along anyway. So I don't see this notion of wars and conflicts. It's really just trying to sustain the regulatory uh, function of OPEC, and that requires a lot more cooperation than just Saudi Arabia by itself. There's an awful lot of strategy, it seems, going on here, but it does feel like the global markets are in the crosshairs. It doesn't sound like you're that concerned, but my gosh, investors really are here today. So what's the disconnect then if you think this is not that big of a deal from where we've been previously? Well, it is a big deal for the financial markets for sure, and it's going to be a big deal in the U.S. where um, the rig levels that used to be up around 800 and so, uh, so many rigs back in the uh, 2019 are down to 670 rigs. It, this is oil rigs uh, currently. And more important still, the well completions, which uh, used to be about 1,400 wells per month, are down to 1,000 currently. And the U.S. production at these levels uh, in the historical times, recent times, 2015, 2016, it dropped mm -hmm. down to uh, from 9.5 million to 8.5. So yeah, there are a lot of concerns, uh, definitely, but I think we should remember that this is a transition. You know, the, the virus is here, but it's not going to last forever. The tariff issues should be resolved between the U.S. and China, mm -hmm. and, and the GDP will recover. So it's a transition that we just have to uh, work our way through.